For example, Steam City Defense uses over a hundred stickers. In the published game, we provide a little over two hundred to allow for replacement pieces, but it's a very time-consuming process to apply all of those. There's uh, twelve dice with six sides each, and then twenty-four tokens. So, as you can see, we're just about wrapped up on proofing the stickers. This would have, of course, been a bit faster if we had just done the upload as a batch initially. We're proofing everything here, but if we missed something, the game crafter would tell us by when we go back to the sticker screen saying no under the proofed. The other sections say yes, but that's because there's nothing in there to be proofed. Now we're going to add the stickers for those 12 dice that I mentioned. The dice come in two varieties. There's the enemy action dice and the city dice which the players use in the game. So with the enemy action dice, as you can see here, they're solid colors. Those represent another component that we'll be adding in the parts section, but because they're solid colors we don't need anything too descriptive. It's still a good idea to add names because those names will show up on the shop page to tell prospective buyers what they're getting, but with a part like this it's not really critical. Again here I'm doing things the old-fashioned way, one sticker at a time. If I were smart about it, I'd also be proofing them and changing the quantity as I go. When you go through and do this, you're probably going to want to upload them as a group, but if you do upload them one at a time, make sure to set the quantity to six each and proof the images as you go it's much easier to realize that you've forgotten to proof something when you're doing them one at a time. If you upload them as a batch, sometimes you'll miss something, particularly a large batch, for instance, if you have a game with playing cards, which you'll be building later on. There's actually a bit of a problem with this game because the orange stickers look a bit too much like the red ones when all said and done. Here we're back to the cut lines, as you can see. It doesn't really matter so much because these are just solid colors, but again, there's the trim line that will be lost, and then the area between the red line and the blue line where you might lose things. The area inside the blue square is theoretically safe from being lost even if the printer gets off center by a bit it shouldn't be more than by that margin. Notice that the red trim area is a little bit hard to see on the red image. And here I'm not proofing the yellow and you can see that under dice stickers it says no to proofed. If there's a single object that you haven't gotten gone through and proofed it will let you know 
and you need to go through and proof it before you publish the game. You won't be worrying about publishing the game because that actually requires buying a prototype from the site. Now, for the city dice, the ones that the players use, we're just going to upload them as a group. Again, because things are sorted in folders, we can do this fairly quickly, fairly easily. We don't have to worry about getting pieces that we don't want. For instance, if we have dice stickers for another game, For these dice, the names are a little more important because the faces are less intuitive as to what they go to. So the names of the stickers really tell the prospective buyer what the function is. You can see here, everything is inside of the blue line here because they are actual images rather than just flat colors it's more important to make sure that they aren't lost these are about half an inch when they're printed out now when you go through and do this you're going to need to make sure to proof every image and to adjust the quantity. Like I said before, there's six of each type of dice, so each sticker has to have a quantity of six on it. That's true for both sets of dice. Now, this actually won't come close to filling up a sheet of dice stickers, but it's enough that we're getting our money's worth out of it. Really, the cost of adding additional dice is enough that it's not worth adding more dice just to use up the dice stickers. Now we're going to add a box top sticker which again is back in the stickers section. I'd like to point out since we're here that there's a link underneath the image to download the file. So if it gets lost off your computer you can always come back to it. The box top sticker is used to decorate the default large black box that comes with a game. If we had a customized box, we wouldn't have to worry about this. Again, you can see the margin lines on the outside. It's the same margin, this is just a much larger sticker. So we've added all of our stickers, we've proofed them all, so it's now time to move on to parts. As you can see, the large box is already there. That's the one the sticker's going to go on, the box top sticker. Now we need to get the tokens to go with the token stickers. Now I know where I'm going with this, but let's pretend for a moment that I didn't. I could sort through all the different token pieces. I know that it's round, so I can look at the details on the blue disk, figure out what the cost is, the surface area, see if it's right for me. The blue disk is 0.59 inches across, which probably isn't going to be the best fit. Could potentially use the poker chips, but those have the ridge around the edge that would make it hard for the sticker to stick to. 
Then we find this token chip made of a composite material, in case you need to find it by material. Here you can see that it actually says in the description that it works well with the stickers. So if you use the search term stickers in the search box, you would find the token chips. Now we're going to need 24 tokens because we have uh, six types of tokens with four of each. We actually have twice that many stickers, but that's because we have stickers for front and back. You don't really need stickers front and back, but it's decorative. You can see these blank D6 here. Those are designed to have the dice stickers go on them. Well, the dice stickers are designed to go on the blank. Six-sided dice might be the better way to put it. Again, once the description loads, you can see in the description that they work with the dice stickers. The die itself is 0.75 inches, but the sticker doesn't take up the whole surface area. You may be able to see in the image that there's a bit of an indent. I'm using two different colors of dice to be able to easily distinguish between the enemy action dice and the city dice. Go ahead and change the quantity to six each. Now we're looking for the winks. These are what the enemy action dice referred to. They're used as defense tokens in the game to represent the defenses of the player's city. Just like we have the six faces on the dice, we need six different colors. Now again we have four players. They can have six of each type, so we need 24 of each wink. Again, the red and the orange are a little similar. You might want to consider, when building games, making sure that your colors are higher contrast than that. Eventually, with a later edition, we moved to black instead of orange. You can see that our cost each has already moved above the amount that we put in earlier. Now we're going to documents. There's actually two documents for Steam City Defense. One of them is the game rules. This one, however, is actually the construction rules because there are so many stickers it was important to give guidelines to the user on how to put it together now with the documents there's an option to make it printable or downloadable printable means that it will print and ship with the game downloadable means the user or really anyone looking at the shop can download the document and print it themselves. This is nice for a couple of reasons, one of which is if they lose the rules then they don't have to write your company to get a new copy. It does have some downsides though, for instance if you had information you wanted to conceal from some of the players, if you had say a dungeon crawl game with one person controlling monsters and traps you might want to make it so that they can't download the document used by the person that's controlling the dangers of the game